So it's uh, time for another close-up video, this time with the SG. I must say guys that this guitar has really rocked my world. I know that I've been saying that you can't get a Gibson and expect it to be playable right out of the box. This guitar has proved otherwise. It had a great setup, it feels lovely to play. The string action is uh, great, the tension of the neck is uh, precisely where it should be. The tuners, although I'm swapping them out, are also very high standard. I'm going to put these tuners on my Black Beauty Custom and I will put some genuine Grover nickel tuners on this guitar instead. One thing that uh, actually disappointed me on this guitar was that it was the small pots. And I know that you can't say that every big pot is better than every small pot. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to remove these and I'm going to measure them. And I'm going to replace them with uh, big pots. Which I got on my quality Gibson a uh, while back. You might remember that I uh, changed the pot on that guitar to uh, push-pull pots. So I might as well use them. The only thing about these big pots that you usually get from Chinese, they are, they are very hard to turn. I think I will try to lubricate them because this is no way to go. The small pots are always nicer. Oh no, I put a scratch in it. Oh no. The small pots are al always nicer. They have just the right amount of resistance in them, so you, you can easily turn them, but they won't change the settings themselves. Not now, because I don't have it, but I'm going to change this poker chip as well, because it's just a print on there, and you usually get that with chip zones. Too many people, that's not an issue, but it bothers me, so I'm going to change that out to one with a better print. I'm also going to change out this nut, because this nut is not good at all. It is a plastic nut, and that has been like a 50-50, or more like a 70-30% ratio of oh, these chipsons. Some of them have got them. I never asked for it, but some of them have got them. Some of the more higher end, so the gold top and uh, also the quality chipson that I got, one piece chipson. They have had it from the get-go. I think I'm going to replace this trussard cover, though this one looks actually really good. It seems like it has been cut nice, but I'm not a big fan of when it says SG on it. I think I'm going to replace it to just a black one. Also, I think I'm going to relic a little bit of these uh, met metal parts because although this is a new guitar, I really don't like that really shiny feeling. So just relic it, not as much as I have done on the gold top, uh, which you will see in a later video, but just a smidge, just a little bit. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Aging, changing strings, changing, changing the nut, the tuners, and uh, also uh, the pots. And you will get some close-ups on this guitar as well because this guitar is actually really, really nice. All right, so uh, let's go. I have actually not even taken off the plastic on uh, these pots here. We will do that today as well. I tell you, these uh, stock strings, they are really low quality. You really have to change them out. It took me about 15 minutes and then the high E string snapped. You know, every guitar that's in stock, you don't know how long they have uh, been laying around with the same strings. Because strings age even, even though you don't play them. They just have to be on the guitar and uh, they will age. Even if you get a high-end guitar like a Gibson or a Fender, you should always change the strings. And you know what? This, this bridge here, it also, also looks very, very good. Uh, it's a ABR1 style. It's not a Nashville style bridge, which I like. These are a little bit smaller and not so bulky as the, as the Nashville uh, version. The only thing that differs uh, this bridge from a real Gibson is this, uh, this bridge knobs here. They have a groove here, so you can adjust it with a screwdriver like this instead of turning it down here. 
I have ordered another bridge for this one because I ordered one for my gold top that is uh, that is this ABR one style but have the small pins here but these are actually very nice We haven't looked in here, so let's do that. And now we can take out the plastic. <laughs> and there you go, <laughs> oh, it's so shiny and new. And uh, this one has this marking, FC52. I haven't the slightest idea what that means. And also the usual polishing residue. Please, China, clean that up. So I will just uh, remove the, the plate here so I can relic it. All the metal parts should be relicked. Not the springs though. Springs or coils, what do you call them? So when I say all the metal parts, that's actually not true. I won't take out these metal dowels here. Come on you. There you go. Off with this plastic. And as you can see here, it's... Uh, Quite a long neck tenon uh, on this guitar. It goes all the way back here to the end of this cavity. Well, that's very usual on an SG on an SG guitar, I think. So, so let's unsolder these. Now, doing this light relic on a guitar, that, that's just an experiment. Maybe it doesn't go right. So, but then I'm able to just change it back if I want to. So. This is just a fun part. Let's see how it turns out. I know that this is a toxic subject, both ship sounds and uh, if you should relic or not. So I'm jumping in in the deep end, but that's fine. So you can clearly see that they have been wax potted. There's wax and grease everywhere. You can also see here it's a ceramic magnet because it's uh, very dark. And this pickup is marked N10. So that's probably for the neck, but this one was FC-52. Hmm. Good, let's take off the other parts. Yeah, it's actually nice here, where the neck meets the body. You can see the lines here, but, uh, and of course you have the the screw holes but uh, other than that uh, it looks very nice this is nearly redundant yeah before i forget let's uh, put some lemon oil on this uh, neck as well it looks a little bit dry so we can soak in while we do the other work when you're doing a one day overhaul on a guitar you uh, really need to plan it out what things do you have to do first uh, before you can do anything else. At the end of the day, you can put, put the guitar back together and it always looks much better with uh, a little oil on the neck. So, yeah, so let's continue screwing this apart and see what, what is hidden underneath. And as usual, they have just put the, the pick guard like this and they have drilled right in. They have not pre-drilled and that means that some of the screws uh, has went in at an angle and that doesn't look very premium. Yeah, little things like that, China. If you fix that, you will be hard to beat. And these ones, I'm going to change the, these out from this model to this model instead. Now, is that all? Is that all of the... No, these ones as well. Let's relic these screws as well. And let's see how the truss rod looks on this guitar. Oh no. Because on uh, the gold top, this was really neat under here, really clean. But uh, I don't think this is... doesn't feel like it. Oh, it's not... Oh no. And I was wrong about this truss rod cover. You can see here that it has been very badly cut. Look at that. Ah, oh, why can't they do this right? They have CNC machines. Used it on these ones as well. So, yeah, I'm going to have to change this. It looks like they have shoot it off with their teeth. 
like animals. Look here behind the truss rod cover. Uh, it doesn't look ni nice at all. It looks really hor horrible actually. Let's see if we can just... Because it's not hard to get it nice. So I don't know why the Chinese are leaving it like this. Why are you only doing 98%? That would put you as a very scary contender. So it takes about two minutes to clean this out and it takes two months to ship it to Europe. So I don't mind if they take those two extra minutes doing this. And there you go, much cleaner, much nicer. Let's put these metallic parts in some plastic containers outside in my garage and let them be there for maybe a few hours. Mm. Oh no. What the f <whistles> Look at this. <clears throat> That's just bad quality. One of these just snapped like this and the other one snapped inside here. These two, two will go in the bin. Fortunately, I have some spares. I'm just going to loosen these and then I'm going to solder them. Just to keep the pickups in place. Like so. Now in this cavity, you can see this here, this jack output hasn't been uh, as long as that should be, as tall as it should be. So they have just, uh, first they have tried to drill it out because, uh, before they have uh, put some paint on the guitar. But then they have, instead of uh, taking a jack output with a taller neck, they have just hacked away here. So uh, I have to be very careful here because it's not a lot of material here. Uh, to work with. The SG guitars are known for crack he for cracks here. Uh, that's not the best way uh, to put in a jack. It's much better if you just get one with a taller neck instead of doing this. I would strengthen this maybe with a big metal washer here and get one with a taller neck. That's why this is like that. But we will unsolder these. We will uh, take the measurements on them and we will compare them to the big ones. And as I said before, these big pots, they are very hard to turn. So I will put some VD40 in these to see if I can get them to be a little more relaxed. Yeah, so it's better. I will do it on the other three as well. So just put some VD40 in there. If you get a ship sun with uh, knobs that are practically unturnable, just uh, put some uh, VD40 inside of them and turn them a bit and uh, they will be fine. Let's start by measuring these. Maybe I did it in the last video. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. There's always a guitar in the way. I don't know why. Okay, so. And remember to turn them up. All the way. And it reads 471, 496. Okay, let's turn it up. 477, and the last AK500. Okay, so let's see. It's 484. So these are uh, within the tolerance. I think I can use them. All right, all right, all right. So let's unsolder the small pots. And that's the A. So let's uh, measure that. Five hundred and thirty-two. Yeah.
what's that 454 so quite a big difference in those two Now, let's measure this. Four hundred and fifty-two. So let's change out this nut and these tuners. As you can see, I took away some of the some of the paint here, quite much actually, but uh, that's no biggie. And that's some relicking too. And as always, I use the Music Lily brand nut for this. They're about $10 or 10 euros, and you get two of them. That's the plastic nut, and this is the bone nut. The plastic is actually hollow, and if you know anything about resonance, then you know that if it's not an acoustic guitar, uh, you should really have a, a solid piece of material. So you can have a brass nut, you can have a bone nut, and you can even have a plastic nut. There's, a, there's this brand, Graftech. Uh, I think uh, Gibson fits their guitars with Graftech plastic nuts nowadays. But uh, a bone nut, you really can't go wrong with it. So this one is actually a little bit big, so I have to sand it. When you file down, take it step by step, sneak uh, up on it. You don't want to take too much. Boy, this bone, these bone nuts, they really smell awful. And I think that's good. But I also want to, because you can see here, it's quite high. So I have to take it down quite a bit, actually. Now let's take a look at these tuners. Now this will be a fun comparison. This is a genuine Grover and this one is a fake one this comes off it's just plastic like so so you can clearly see that this is a forgery and this is the real thing you can see it here on the font that says Grover it's a little bit different I can also tell you that this one is actually quite a bit heavier than this one and if I do like this this one is a little bit more flimsy you can see no you can't see but uh, it's more flimsy than this one but they are really close and uh, the Chinese Grovers are actually um, really good and these fit like a glove so the the measurements are the same as the Chinese ones and the washers are a little bit different as well. The Grovers has a little bit of an edge here on, on the washer. And uh, the Chinese washer does not. And this was my plan all along when I got this guitar. I bought these Grover tuners for the quality chips on. Tobacco burst, you know. Uh, right there, actually. I didn't quite like the look of that and you can see that they are not uh, fitting in this here uh, Gibson original Grover case so that tells me that these are actually a little bit taller than these as well so that's a big that's a difference as well mm -hmm. and that's it okay so I have done just a light relic in on uh, some of the parts and I have uh, scrambled it in this here jar I just want to do a light relicking because I don't like when guitars are too shiny. Let's try this. Some of the parts are still in uh, the muriatic acid. But this came out like this. And these are chrome. And if you wanted them to get more relict faster, you can take a piece of sandpaper and sand it down. A very fine piece of sandpaper and sand it down and then uh, relic it. And that will speed up the process just a little bit, make it 
looked maybe 10, 15 years old. Hmm. I think that this guitar would look uh, awesome uh, without the uh, pickup covers. Let's go with the covers for now. And I uh, am going to go with black screws here instead of chrome, mostly because I think it looks better. Sometimes these plastic pot comes with two uh, protective films over it, but in this case I can only find one that will go there. This one. It's a three-ply scratch plate. All right, so let's see how this relicking went. Uh, this is the pickup covers. So this is light relicking, and this is on chrome part, so it's not the same as if you relic nickel. And this here is the tailpiece. And this is the bridge. And these are all the screws. So let's put this back together. Really, I'm just doing this relicking thing because I think it uh, it's fun. You can have an opinion on what you like. And I haven't made my mind up yet if it's good or if it's a little bit too much. But I tend to like guitars that are a little bit worn. And uh, if you can speed up that process, that's fine by me. It's a personal preference, which I'm not going to have an opinion about. You do what you want. That's the fun of this. A thousand ways to do things and nothing is wrong just ask yourself what you want to do and if you're doing that then it's right and don't be afraid of trying things just uh, make sure to have a way out always leave the back door open so you can double back like so and we also have these these things just to complete the look so what do you think about me relicking this? Would you do it or would you not? Do you like old looking guitars or do you like uh, new looking guitars? Please leave a comment about that. It would be fun to hear what you think. All right, so, so far so good. Everything here works. And now we will change these strap holders. Let's start with the one on the back. And I think these came out nice. This is the screw, and this is the actual holder. So it's not over-the-top relict like on my gold top, but it's a little bit relict. I will give you some uh, close-ups at the end of the video, so you can make up your mind for yourself. There it is. Yeah, it looks 70s. I don't know why guys, but I associate the SG with uh, the 70s. Maybe it's because of Santana and the double neck SG that Jimmy Page had. I used to own uh, the Paul. Uh, it was from 1979. It was as old as I am. It had a walnut body actually, which is kind of rare. And it looked a little bit like this. Of course, it was a less Paul uh, shape, but a uh, single cutaway. In color, it was uh, kind of like this. Maybe that's why I associate it with the 70s. Just for fun, let's put in another color of, uh, on this toggle switch. Look at that. Yeah, much nicer, classy. Yeah, you, we should do the truss rod cover as well. I think I have one in here, one that's just black. Yeah, there it is. I was going to use this on my uh, on my greenie, but uh, what the hey, I'm going to use it on this SG instead. I can always order another one for the the greenie, and I think that the greenie one should not have this exact crossroad cover. It should have more like this one. See with the broader white line around it. So I got this crossroad cover from France on eBay. Probably gonna order one more. Check out the difference in how they are cut. This is a nice truss roll cover. Uh, all the way around, but, but 
here in the back this is much nicer so yeah this one goes in and there you go a black cross rod cover yeah i think i'm going to have to uh, loosen the the truss rod a bit because of this that's okay that's fine and that's not fine we'll have to loosen it and in that way give the string a little more space to uh, to vibrate Can you hear the difference? When I loosen the truss rod, the bus goes away. And that's because you're loosening in this neck and you're making the, the place on the, on the neck where the, the string vibrates the most is in the middle. So that's where you have to create the most space for the string to vibrate. And that's in, here in the middle. And that's why you have to have this line on a guitar neck. You can't have it flat because then it's gonna buzz like like hell so i think it's done let's just tune it up let's do some close-ups and talk it through this is the close-up of the output jack i only relicked the washer and the nut but i think it turned out uh, quite nice i have to strengthen this uh, in this hole though with a, a bigger um, metal washer from the back these i had to change out because uh, two of them uh, broke when i tried to take them off so but, but fortunately, I had a few laying around. And here, the toggle switch knob. Uh, I think it turned out great with the ivory knob instead of the black one. I also relicked the, the washer and the nut on the scratch plate. These are the relicked screws. And I like that they are quite big screws. And uh, this is a stop bar, a tailpiece. And this is the bridge. And this is the pickups. They got a little bit relict. And uh, also I changed the screws on the pickup frames to black screws. And also this one is relict. And also here the, the black screws. There's a bow nut here instead of a plastic one, a hollow plastic one. And uh, the truss rod cover which I think looks nicer this way. And uh, with relict screws too. And the new Grover tuners, which are great. And on the back, nothing much. We have the new pots in here. And uh, this one got relict as well. And so did the other one. And these are the Grover tuners. So what do you think guys? I think it turned out quite nice. It was a fun project. I got to use some of my old pots lying around. I also got to relic one more time, which I think is very neat to do and very fun to do. And this time I just made a quick and a light relic on chrome pots. The relicking will come out nicer if you use nickel plated hardware instead. Made it look a little bit older, I think. And, uh, and the toggle switch knob. It makes a difference, I think. So please comment what you think about this guitar and my light relic and how it is now, how it looks now. I'm going to leave it at that. If you like the content on my channel, please like and subscribe as always. I hope you had a fun time with me and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.